Thank you. My guest isn't wearing a tie, so I'm not. Uh, my guest tonight is probably uh, best known to you as one of the perpetrators of Monty Python's Flying Circus. Uh, he's Graham Chapman. He also played King Arthur in, the, in uh, Monty Python and the Holy Grail, and uh, uh, Brian of Nazareth in, in The Life of Brian. So you, you may also, if you see television both here and abroad, known from The Frost Report or uh, at last, the 1948 show. I love that title. Or Doctor at Large. In any case, uh, you maybe you don't know that he is a uh, accredited physician in Britain. So uh, if anyone has a problem, he may make, make an audience call here in the studio. Uh, he he could practice there, I guess, at any time he likes. He's just written his first book, and it's called A Liar's Autobiography, <laughs> Volume Six. <laughs> I'd like to see him explain that. Will you welcome Graham Chapman? Sure. Well, ah. <laughs> didn't we meet in a massage parlor? Yes, we did. That's where we met yeah. the last time. Graham pointed that out. It was some uh, goofy uh, publicity gimmick of some sort, and we, were, we met in a massage parlor, which has since been torn down. Has it? Uh, yeah. I've learned that the, the premises are now... Uh, a, filthy, vacant lot, which is much more respectable than they were when we were, <laughs> we were there. You know, something I, uh, do, do you like my jacket, by the way, and my color combination here? This is interesting. <laughs> yes, what, what about this, though? Yeah, that's, that's excellent. That, that's what I want to wear all the time. I found this in Australia. I, uh. There was a great flap backstage because they couldn't find the jacket I was supposed to wear, and this one's too small and belongs to someone else. And but don't stare. But uh, <clears throat> whatever you do, don't call attention to it and make me self-conscious. That's all I want to know. Can I have a drink of this? Yeah, I I'll just try that, too. I think it's a... Mm. Thank you. Uh, rhubarb juice, I think, is what I have. <laughs> you know, uh, Graham, I always wondered... I've never heard anybody talk about this. Uh, they always talk about British comedy that Americans don't understand. Mm. Uh, or the fear that things won't import. Or, you know. Has any of our comedy gone over there and been misunderstood, or uh, have you seen any any American comics that wouldn't uh, translate to in, in Britain? Uh, um, I don't think so. There's, there's, uh, at the moment, we have what uh, Barney Miller is, is on. Yeah. Unfortunately, rather rather late at night. I don't think the BBC quite understands that it, it is as good as it is. In fact, I, I like that show. They put it on too late, as if it was... Yeah, 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 yeah. Which is always an indication with the BBC that they don't really like a thing or they don't understand it. They always put our, us on late. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> on, on Sunday nights, they didn't like us very much. Um, so what? Barney's getting the same treatment. But uh, MASH is on at the moment, for instance. That uh, goes down very well, indeed. What about Debussy Fields and Groucho and, and all those people? They're yeah. all... Yeah. They, they dig them all. Oh, yes. Yeah. yeah. Are you recognised often as a, as a python? Um, I'm not often recognized, I think, uh, which is fortunate. Yeah. That's fine. It's not, nothing to be... Always appear in beards and things like that in movies, so yeah. uh, no problem. Could you give me some idea of what the, uh, how the Python show's got gotten together, got written? I, I suppose most people picture a, a raucous room full of uh, hilarity uh, with uh, six or seven people mm. capering madly and somebody taking it all down, but... Uh, yes, they do. No, that, that's, that's not the case, no. It's, yeah. uh, it's rather dull, actually. We, uh, we go and write separately in different little groups. I write with John Cleese, uh, Michael Palin, and Terry Jones write together, although they seem to do that separately now, mm -hmm. at a distance, and then come together and meet before they meet the rest of us and uh, decide which bits they dare read out, you know? Yeah. And Eric writes on his own, and then we meet together and read it out and decide which is the which we think the funniest? We have a system of ticks. Like well, if something is meets with universal approval from the group, we'll give it three ticks. Little, what yeah. we call a check mark. Right. And uh, if it gets uh, you know, moderate approval, um, maybe just one slight objection, two ticks. If it's uh, reasonably good, n not embarrassing, it'll get one tick and 
usually be forgotten. Mm -hmm. And uh, if it gets no ticks at all, then it's uh, considered for another show, perhaps, or <laughs> put in a bottom drawer. Yeah. The no tick drawer. The no tick drawer. Yeah. Well, the title originally came. I think when Cleese was here, he mentioned a few titles that you had considered before the one you finally got. My favorite was um, Owl Stretching Time. Ah. Was that the? Yeah. Was that the? Is that right or was the Owl Stretching Time? Yes, Owl, owl Stretching, stretching time. time. Yeah. Um, I don't know why. I guess that's part why I, it's so I funny. I like that one, I must say. But then and, uh, I was happy to read that that was your um, my invention. Idea, and yes, yes. <laughs> read that in your book. Yes, yes. As was, um, what was the other one? Oh, yes, Toad Elevating Moment. I mm -hmm. quite like. T O A D. That didn't meet with universal approval. I think that got no ticks, in fact. <laughs> that, was, that was tickless, was it? Tickless. Yeah. Yeah. Tickless. Sex and Violence was another possibility. <laughs> So they couldn't say there's too much. Right. Mm -hmm. well, at least we were yeah. stating what it was. H Hollywood is new to you, is it? Uh, how do you mean? Well, I mean, had you been there? Had you worked there many times? Uh, mm, no. Uh, I I lived there actually recently for about 18 months. Yeah. Which was a strange experience. Uh, quite a pleasant one, but uh, I found it rather difficult to to get down to work there to, to write. Mm -hmm. There's so many distractions. It's a pleasant place. There's sun shining, and there's a, yeah, usually a swimming pool fairly close. It's very difficult to get down to writing. It's easy in London because there's very little to do. It's raining. Um, well, really, nothing to do except work. <laughs> yes, uh, I, I know British writers who have had to <laughs> had to buy the the rain sound effect machine <laughs> to put in their rooms <laughs> to yes. work. There is one that's. It's a sleep machine, that. actually, that makes the sound of rain. Yeah. And I know one man who has <laughs> to feel at home. He has to keep that thing running. Mm. Uh, I wonder if you could leave that on all night and flood your apartment. I guess not. <laughs> Yellowbeard, is that that's a film you're working on now? With Cook? Yes, that's a, a film script that I wrote with, uh, with Peter Cook. And um, we hope to get that in production this, this summer. Yeah. With any luck. And, uh, well, with, with, with money, basically. Well, which is yeah. another way of saying with any luck. With yeah. any luck, yes. Yeah. And that's, uh, I suppose, uh, best described as a monstrous piratical yarn. Uh, it's uh, an adventure comedy. On the high seas? It's on the high seas and, uh, and uh, treasure islands and that sort of thing. Yeah. And raping and pillaging and that sort of thing. Ah. Uh, something for the whole family. Something for the whole family, indeed. Yes. Sure. sure. Yes. See, uh, this is a blind stab in the dark. I guess all stabs in the dark would be blind, wouldn't they? Um, yeah. Someone said, someone said to ask you about uh, your S-U-N award acceptance speech. Ah, yes. Yes, that, uh, okay. yes, we were uh, given an award for a most original comedy show, I've forgotten the year, by uh, a Sun newspaper, and they have this award ceremony. Now, we'd been uh, filming as a group over in, <coughs> in Germany, in Bavaria, and... Uh, around about the time of the Oktoberfest, so I'd had quite a lot to drink. Very pleasant. Um, and uh, we were, because we were filming, uh, I was, we were all required to stay on for the editing of this, uh, th this film. I didn't want to, I wanted to get back to London. And uh, by an excuse, I said that I would agree to collect this award. We none of us are too keen on awards, really. Um, so I said I would accept it, and uh, on behalf of the team and, uh, and the director, who would normally have done it for us. So I arrived at the, uh, the Dorchester Hotel, uh, really uh, quite drunk, I think would be an accurate description mm -hmm. uh, of my state. Um, and uh, I went into uh, Dorchester and uh, said, where is this, uh, this, this television thing? And uh, I was shown into a room and uh, I, I went up to uh, the, uh, the place where they were serving drinks and asked for a drink. And I was told this would cost one pound 50. And I thought this is a bit of a cheap awards uh, sort of organization this and looked around the room and I couldn't recognize anybody and thought well there's really not much of an award we've been given um, except for one person uh, a fellow called Percy Thrower who was uh, I only recognized from gardening club on television <laughs> uh, very strange I think I would have recognized him yeah anyway um, <clears throat> I found that I was in fact in the wrong room and this was a meeting of gardening club um, <clears throat> That so would, would I left it. and, uh, and <laughs> said, you know, is there another television thing around here? And they said, ah, you, the awards, the Sun Awards. Right. 
So I went into that, and this, of course, was in the huge ballroom with chandeliers and everything. I was dressed much the same way, much the same way as I'm dressed now, and uh, felt a little bit out of place. I was also uh, half an hour late. I'd missed the meal. Uh, anyway, I was sat down at a table, and uh, found this little little envelope saying, um, "We're not supposed to tell you this, but you have in fact won an award, and you will be expected to say one or two words of, of, of thanks." And uh, I'd so. Oh dear, oh, never mind, had a few more drinks and uh, watched the, uh, the ceremony as it was going on and uh, it was, uh, the, the awards were actually being presented by Reginald Maudling, the on Reginald Maudling who was in fact at the time Chancellor of the... No he wasn't, he was, he was Home Secretary, Home Secretary, ah. that's right, and um, an important figure. And uh, so I, I'd watched all these people going up and saying the usual things about, uh, it's not really me uh, that's, that's getting this award, it's all these other people behind me, the, the, the makeup artists, uh, the makeup artist lady's cat. Um, you know, it's not me at all. Uh, I wish you would thank them and so on and so on. Um, wonderful stuff, the usual uh, kind of stuff that you get at award ceremonies. Yeah. And um, so when it came up time for me to go and collect the award and say something, I collected the award uh, from uh, uh, Reginald Maudling and I went up to the microphone and I said that uh, I wouldn't want to do anything at all which would de detract from the dignity of the occasion and then went <laughs> fell on the ground and crawled all the way back to my seat <laughs> on the ground and now this got an amazing reaction um, <laughs> really? yeah, I can't imagine why. cameras flashed all over the place <laughs> and um, some people thought it was absolutely disgusting. Uh, other people la laughed outrageously because it had happened at last. Mm -hmm. Someone had flipped yeah. uh, one, one of these occasions. And I remember the, the, Scylla Black actually fell off her chair. Laughing? <laughs> at that point. Uh, Screamed, crawl, fell and crawled. Is that's what right, you did. Crawled all the way back. Well, that's, so that, that seems to me the made, obvious thing to do. It it made, it, yes, it did to me at the <laughs> time. It made the front page of the sun the next day. Yeah. Anybody could they frown still, on that. Yeah. Uh, we haven't had an award since. <laughs> no, no one's taken a chance. No. Well, uh, how could you possibly top that? You are, in fact, an accredited physician, are you? Or, 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 yes. Or, or, or ready to... Yes. Yes, I, I passed my exams. Yes. So, you, if, if, if necessary, you could... Yeah. Uh, at, say, at, at the risk of, get, of getting uh, serious for a moment, the, the book, mm. which is very funny, uh, contains a lot of stuff that isn't funny. Yes. And um, I, I don't mean... Uh, by that, I don't mean things that tried to be an art. Um, but uh, the first chapter, it's hard to tell whether it was written while you were drunk or written like, I mean, as mm. one who is drunk would write. Well, the, uh, you mean chapter naught? Am I being too coy oh. about getting at the fact that you were alcoholic? Alco no, no, do. Carry yeah. on. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, I, that was written shortly afterwards um, yeah. and uh, really describes my experience of, uh, of withdrawing from alcohol, yeah. um, which was interesting and not a thing I would like to repeat, uh, mm -hmm. I think I'd put it that way. Uh, I had been drinking in a phenomenal quantity and uh, I'd reached a peak uh, of about 80 fluid ounces of gin a day. Uh, that was only at my peak, but that was a lot. ounces? Yes. H how does that, would that fill a bottle? I suppose, oh yes, that would fill a few bottles. It would be, I suppose, uh, the US measures, it's different, yeah. calculating from uh, English pints and so on. It would be, uh, a quart is what, 32 fluid ounces, isn't it? So it'd be two and a half. Is that right? Two and a half quarts. Yeah. Yeah. 16 fluid ounces to five. quarts? Yes, a phenomenal quantity. Does your liver look like a dish ready? Well, I was beginning to get worried. <clears throat> about my liver, mm -hmm. which was uh, one of the reasons I had every reason to. Yeah. Um, <laughs> one of the reasons why I thought perhaps I ought to consider giving up. Uh, that and the fact that uh, my best friend at the time and uh, drinking companion, Keith Moon, uh, was uh, going through problems with withdrawal. Uh, and I noticed that he kept going back to drink as well uh, afterwards. Yeah. I determined that I wouldn't do that, that I would give up for good. Um, and decided to do that at uh, an auspicious time. I chose Christmas, uh, and I had a. This was the first opportunity, really, that I'd, I I got some uh, space of time clear mm -hmm. uh, in which to, uh, as it were, clear my head and bloodstream and uh, of this noxious substance. So, uh, the day after Christmas, uh, three years ago, I 
went to bed and uh, thought, I'll, I'll, I'll sweat this out, see it through. Three days later, not knowing really whether I'd slept at all or whether I'd been awake, whether I'd been dreaming all the strange things that I'd been thinking uh, or whether they'd happened, um, very, uh, uh, yeah, I didn't really know where I was. I'd had uh, strange sensations of things crawling all over me. Um, uh, a lamp that was beside my bed uh, appeared to be attacking me. And this is a, a W.C. Fields. Um, his flinch from objects was very much based on that kind of uh, impression that uh, objects were out to get you. Um, so that was extremely unpleasant. Um, the next, uh, after the three days, uh, I was feeling better. I, at least I'd stopped shaking. Um, mm -hmm. And uh, I could get dressed, and I got up and uh, went downstairs and invited a couple of friends around for a drink to, to celebrate. Um, <laughs> not me with, with drink, but uh, yeah. them with drink, and I would have tonic water. Uh, this is three days of just the horrors you yes, had? Yes, it really was. Staying in bed and Quite get, horrific, yeah. Getting up only yeah. to go to the bathroom. With a, in a darkened room, I couldn't bear the light or anything. Yeah. Really very unpleasant. Um, mm. And so the friends came for a drink. And while pouring uh, uh, them a drink, I knocked over a Christmas card and I uh, tried to stand that up again and my hands started to shake a little bit. And I thought, well, no, 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 I'm not going to allow this to happen. My hands don't shake anymore in the way they used to. I tried desperately hard to stand the thing up, just went completely rigid and fell over, collapsed. Little, uh, little minor epileptic type fit, in fact. A very small, you know, slight duration, only a matter of a couple of minutes, probably less. Um, that was uh, quite important, I think. I mean, it really made me realize what I'd been doing to myself. Uh, mm. Dramatic event like that. And in fact, that does, uh, is some sort of sign that you have a reasonable prognosis uh, uh, as regards to being able to keep off alcohol because it's, it's such a, a, a terrible warning to get that uh, you really yeah. know about it, you know. That realization is a good sign. Apparently, yeah. Yeah, yeah. When, uh, when no you no problem since. So, yeah, and you stayed clean. Yeah. Uh, I had a couple of weeks on on Valium, but that was all. Will that work for everyone? That kind of drying out of it. I don't, it's hard to I say. I've heard of the, the most really succeeding at that. Well, the most difficult thing, quite honestly, was uh, coming to the decision mm -hmm. uh, to quit, to decide that I was going to quit, and it would be for good because I did enjoy drink. Um, how, how, how whereas you, with Keith, you see, that the, the problem with him, I think, was that he didn't want to give up. Yeah. But once I'd decided, it was relatively easy. This is Keith Moon of The Who. Yes, yeah. Who died uh, from drink and what's that pill you mentioned? It's in a Oh, him and Neverin, yes, yeah. Combination yeah. of a pill uh, that's, that's right. supposed to avoid the horrors of withdrawal and booze. Uh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Uh, of course, people always say, well, how did you ever get to the point where you were drinking that much? Uh, does it, as they say, sneak up on you to the tune of three chords? Well, of, yes, it was um, a gradual process. Uh, yeah. I mean, it's not a thing that you could go out and do, just drink that amount, unless you'd worked up to it. Yeah, <laughs> um, so uh, um, I drank a lot right from, uh, well, quite an early age, really. I was always tall. Yeah. Uh, so even at the age of 14, I was uh, able to get away with the... Uh, standing at the back in, the, in, a, in a public house or a bar. Um, and at medical school, and medical schools in England, rather different to medical schools here, uh, where they take things more seriously. I suppose because doctors are paid more. I'm not sure. <laughs> anyway, uh, maybe that's the reason. A rather flippant statement there. But uh, yes, medical schools in England um, are quite uh, uproarious places in, there, in a way. Um, I suppose because... Uh, it's rather a serious life afterwards, after you've qualified. Mm -hmm. um, and so they have a, a good time while they're qualifying. And uh, thereafter, uh, going into entertainment, uh, drink was more readily available even than it had been uh, at the hospital, which is saying something. Um, yeah. It really was available there. Uh, and it, it just carried on and on, really, mm -hmm. uh, gradually to reach those sort of limits. Did the, when you had feeling things were crawling on you. Yes. Did what I think they call the cognitive side of your mind know, to say to itself, no, I, because you knew of the phenomenon yeah. of DTs. Now, of course, this is what people get when they're in this condition. And yeah. yet, here it is happening to me. Oh, yes, yes. Um, and I was thinking, ah, mm, peripheral neuropathy. 
probably, you know. Yes. Yeah. Oh, yes, I knew, I knew what was happening. Uh, but that didn't make it any less horrible. No, it didn't, no. Yeah. Probably slightly less, actually, to be fair. Yeah. 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 It was less, less worrying. Yeah. Uh, we, we have, I think, only four minutes left. That you've been through two crises, and that seems to be the easier, or the harder of the two, I would mm. guess. The, the other one had to do with homosexuality, and you talked yeah. with, uh, there was a, uh, a very uh, interesting part of the book where you talk about uh, this problem and your parents uh, finally getting to the point where you felt you had to let somebody know, mm. and uh, which of them took it better? Um, well... I'll, I'll, I'll go in order, really. Um, I told my mother first. Um, I felt obliged to tell them. I wanted to tell them because uh, I didn't want to lie uh, yeah. anymore. And, uh, and none of your Python friends were aware? Well, I, t I told them first. I told my friends first. Yeah. So a couple of years before, in fact. Um, but uh, my parents... Yes, I told my mother, and uh, she... Uh, well, she took it badly. Um, and uh, she was uh, uh, afraid mainly because I said, well, uh, you know, I, I, and I want to tell my father, and she was saying, no, no, don't, it'll kill him, you know, it'll kill him. And I said, no, it won't, it won't. of course it won't, that was silly. Yeah. got rather angry with her in turn, and, um, but she insisted on that point, and uh, got really very angry and was, was, was stamping her little feet and was quite outraged. Uh, but I knew that I ought to have expected that reaction and uh, that it was right nevertheless to carry on and uh, and tell my father but I gave in that that day and didn't thinking I'll leave it for another day and uh, a week later I was traveling south on my way back to London and uh, was intending to call in and see my parents but uh, couldn't because I was running a little bit late and um, so I rang them up to say that I wouldn't be calling in and my father said that uh, my mother hadn't been sleeping for the whole of the last week. She'd been behaving rather oddly and that uh, you know, just couldn't go to sleep and was obviously very worried about something. Eventually, he'd pinned her down and, and, and asked her, you know, what is this? What, what is it that's, that's worrying you? And she'd explained. And uh, he said, look, don't worry about it. She just doesn't understand about these things, which was marvelous. That's good, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. So no worry at all. And really, no, other, m no worry for my mother. It was all, you know, a, built up in their own minds to something which yeah. it wasn't really there. So it didn't kill him? No, not at all. I'm very, very happy now. Yeah. Yeah. So both those burdens are now off your shoulders. It yeah. must seem like the, uh, the sky is open, as they say. Or the, 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 a lot of well, yes, yeah, it's, it's funny, looking pretty good. You don't think of, uh, I don't know why, but you think of people in comedy, and particularly, I don't know why, the, the Pythons and uh, there's a group of devil-may-care uh, fellows, who I'm sure this is naive, who have no problems, who laugh their way through life, and here you... You've had these two yes, aspects I, of your life that can really be. Oh, I think. Uh, did, did you get any? Did, did you get, have you gotten any reaction from people who say someone like you admitting it has helped me? Um, well, I or, must admit. I mean, one of the uh, one of the things that I have done is to uh, to an extent because uh, because of having suffered those the, the, those problems and uh, not really suffered very much, particularly as far as uh, with homosexuality. Uh, it was never a great worry to me, uh, but I was conscious of the fact that it could be, and, uh, and it was a very awkward problem for people, particularly in, the, uh, in, in provincial England, uh, not in the centre of things in, in London. And, uh, feeling they that, were the only one. And right, exactly, feeling that, that they were the only one, no one else liked them in the world, and uh, that's a very unpleasant situation, um, which can lead to suicide, and certainly a lot of unhappiness anyway. Yeah. Uh, and uh, so that spurred me into um, helping uh, to establish a newspaper in, in Britain called Gay News, which mm. uh, is, is still thriving, fortunately. I just helped it during its first year of, of formation to, until they'd, got, uh, they'd managed to get advertising revenue. Uh, I, was, I helped them out a little bit financially. Oh. There's Can music starting. No, there's no music oh. starting. <laughs> oh. This is not a dream? Not a dream. <laughs> Graham, this has been m most interesting. Thank you for being so amusing and frank and all of those things at once. And pleasure. Please come back. Thank you. Yeah. Graham Chapman. Good night. Thank you.
Funding for the Dick Cavett Show has been provided by this station and other public television stations and by a grant from the Chubb Group of insurance companies.